Hello everyone! Thank you for stopping by today. I'm Smita from the blog Smiling Colors and today I'm showing you how I do easy colorful blending with Tombow Jewel brush pens. This is the 96 color set and these are all really gorgeous pens. I love how colorful they are. Today I'm using the N00 number pen. This is the colorless blender pen that comes with each set. At first you may not know what to do with it actually, but it is great for color blending and shading techniques. Now when it comes to choosing color combinations to color with, I look for inspiration. Instead of just trying to grab random colors and hope that they look good together, I like to start with an idea. Today I visited the Pantone website and they have great color combinations showing how you can use the color of the year, greenery. I printed out the color combination sheet and today I'm going to work with this color set named Fathomless. I went through the marker colors and created a sample swatch. This color pen number 195 corresponds to the Pantone color of the year for 2017, Greenery. And here are the other colors I chose. I also love this other color combination here named Rev It Up. And I pulled out colors to match that as well. I share a bonus coloring video using this combo on my Instagram page, The Shiny Nest. So make sure you stop by to check it out. The question most asked to me on social media. What paper should I use with my Tombow Jewel brush pens? There are so many options out there. Here are, here are a few sketchbooks of mine in which I use them. This is the Mixed Media book by Canson. This is my favorite of the lot. I can color, hand letter and watercolor in this. I love the spiral binding it comes with and the size 7 by 10 inches. This is a newer sketchbook of mine by B Paper. I bought it because I absolutely love the square shape of it and of course the spiral binding. The paper is nice but not as thick as the previous one. Next is the Canson watercolor pad. The paper in this is so thick and luxurious. Perfect for adding lots of water to your colors. I wish it came in with the spiral binding. I don't like how the pages fall out of the spine here. The last one I share, I'm sharing is a mixed media sketchbook by Strathmore. This is what I'll be using today and I haven't tried my Tombow Dual brush pens on this before. So let's see how it works. For today's project, I'm actually printing some hand-drawn cards of mine, so I tore a page out of the sketchbook. The paper is not too thick, so I was able to easily feed it into my printer, and I printed out some adult coloring designs onto them. These are meant to be colored and given as note cards, and I will leave a link to where you can get them. I then trim my note cards, cut off the excess parts, but don't throw those paper strips away. I like to keep them on the side and try my colors on those before bringing it to my actual project. This way there won't be any surprises. Okay now we have everything prepped, let's start coloring. I want to mention that my colorless blender tip is really stained, I have used it quite a bit already. But that is okay, just make sure to scribble on a scrap paper to remove any leftover color and then it is good to go. I'm starting with the greens and I'm applying a little color to each side of here and then I'm using the blender pen to drag color to the center from both sides. The colors will meet in the center and create a new shade. I'll repeat that again here and you can see it better. I apply a little of each green to the sides and then I use the blender pen to drag the colors to meet in the center. Another way I like to use the blending pen. I add color to the bottom of the semicircle here and then I use the blender pen to, to color in and fill the entire shape. This gives a beautiful ombre look very easily and quickly. This is actually my favorite way to use the blender pen. The color created is so dramatic and this is super quick. Now I continue to color in this manner, add color then drag that color to where I want it with the blender pen. You can go back and add more color if you need, but I found that this particular paper wasn't too thick and the paper would peel if I went over the same area a few times. Now having a color scheme to begin with is so helpful. I just reach for my next color and add it to the project, no thinking. Make sure you clean your blender pen by scribbling its tip on a scrap piece of paper. But this is particularly important when you're moving to say yellow from a black or a pink. Using a blender pen is a great way to create depth and lightness in your colored piece. You can use just a few colors of markers but by using the blender pen it looks like you used a ton of different colors. 
Now remember the Tombow Jewel Brush Pens have a firmer marker tip on the other end and I like to use that to color in my finer lines and to add more details to my project. If you add color using the marker tip you can still blend them. I love the marker feature of these pens. This way it is so easy to give outlines and add more details with the same colors that we use for the coloring. Another tip I want to mention while using these blender pens. You need to make sure that the black lines of your initial image won't bleed. Otherwise the blender pen can pick up the black and make all the colors look muddy. The blender pen is water based. So if you are stamping your image you need to make sure that you are using something that is not water based. I like to use the VersaFine black ink for this. But today I printed my images and the printer I use is a Canon printer and I have tested this before and the printer ink does not bleed with water. So I would suggest before using your blender pen on your project, you make a small sample to make sure that the black ink in your image won't bleed. Another handy item to have is the sand eraser. While coloring actually smudged a little color on the white space here, that's an easy fix. First wait for that area to dry. Give it a good few minutes to dry, that way you won't spread the color more. Then take the sand eraser and gently but firmly go back and forth over that area till it dulls down. I always have great results with this eraser and I bring it with me everywhere. Here is the finished card. I absolutely love the greens and blues and I'm so happy with this color combination. Let me know in the comments below if this was fun for you to watch and if my tips were helpful. You can find more details of the colors below and don't forget to stop by my Instagram page to see how this other card here turned out. Thank you so much for spending some crafting time with me today. I will leave you here with a few past coloring videos of mine to enjoy. Happy coloring!